what is up you guys it is Ty welcome back 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 to the Ty Webbs channel and welcome to another video this is your first ever MLW review this is my first time well, that's a lie this is my first time watching the show this is my first time reviewing the show I have seen an MLW episode like I think like probably like anywhere from like a month or two ago I've seen an MLW show and I didn't get around to reviewing it because I wasn't a fan of the episode and I'm like, all right, I'm going to try again. You know, it's New Year. I really want to get into um, a lot of alternative wrestling on this channel. I want to start reviewing. I just subscribed to Revolution Pro Wrestling today. I'm paying the subscription, so that means we're going to be reviewing Rev Pro on this channel as well. Alongside Progress Wrestling, there should be uh, Chapter 81 going up tomorrow. I want to get that out of the way because I want to try and get the unboxing show at Chapter 82 out very soon as well i'm a little backed up on progress but don't worry i'm going to get to that soon but yeah well, alongside progress rev pro and new japan pro wrestling we're now i'm adding major league wrestling to the list of uh shows that are going to be reviewed on this channel so hopefully you guys enjoy that you guys are probably uh like where's all the american wrestling at you know they're doing all this british and japanese wrestling well here it is major league wrestling baby this show overall i mean it kind of happened honestly i feel like this is one of the cases where i once again i feel like i chose the wrong episode to watch not that it was bad but it just wasn't enough to really pull me in and make me want to watch the next show but let's get straight into the car here it was only a two match card so there's really not too much to talk about uh the first match we had was la park versus gringo loco i thought la park uh, stopped wrestling I don't know why, but I thought he stopped wrestling a while ago or something. Like, he's been in the wrestling game for a very, very long time. And uh, I didn't grow up on L.A. Park as he wrestled in WCW. And I didn't watch WCW growing up. This was my first time seeing a match of his, but it was the, f it was the first time in a very long time. And, you know, he's like in his early, maybe mid-50s at this point. So I'm not expecting too much from him. He came out. Then we have Gringo Loco come out. Now, I never heard of this guy before. Um, so I was like, okay, well, we got L.A. Park, someone who I haven't seen wrestle in a very, very, very long time, and Gringo Loco, someone who I've never seen wrestle at all. So I'm like, this should be a very interesting match. Match started off, L.A. Park, you know, he went to go, uh, he extended out his hand to Gringo Loco, they shook hands, and then he started, like, waving his arm up in the air, like, you know, like, just have a victory, whatever, hugged it out, and then he punched him in the head, turned on the crowd, booed. L.A. Park worked heel in this match, I think, I believe he's, he's a heel in this company and he was definitely healing up here i mean it wasn't like anything drastic but he was like doing the dx crotch shot to the crowd he was doing the whole like shut up thing like taunting the crowd and then he took out a, a mexican flag on point and was waving it around and the crowd started chanting usa at him and i was like wait a minute he's not doing this evil foreigner gimmick is he or is the crowd just being racist like i don't understand <laughs> Because, you know, when I see a Mexican wrestler, the first thing I want to do is chant USA. So, you know, very patriotic over there in Miami, Florida. This was a very oddly paced match. I felt like they were trying to work a faster style than they could. And it was just, it just did not work well. At one point, they went up to the bleachers. And I'm like, all right, they're probably about to do something like, someone's about to die off something. It's the expectations I have because I've seen it so many times wrestling now. And they went up there, they exchanged some blows, and he went right back down the steps. Like, he didn't get sent down the steps, nothing. He literally, Ellie Park took him up the steps, punched him a few times, and then took him right back down. I'm like, huh. He got into the ring, they were exchanging some blows. Ellie Park took off his belt, and he, he, he cracked him twice. But the first crack, when he took off his belt, and he whipped the back of Gringo, that shit was loud. It, it went... It, it just made that loud smacking sound on the TV, man. It, I mean, he had a shirt on, so he was fine, but still. That was definitely one of the more noteworthy spots in the match. As I expected, all the high flying really came from Gringo. Not that I would say there was a lot of, like, high flying or anything that you've never seen before. I mean, there was one cool spot in here where he did a, a springboard, um, a springboard, like, cutter onto LA Park. Almost reminiscent of uh Will Osprey's Oz cutter, except he was on the outside first. He hopped to the ring, then did the springboard uh cutter, which I thought was pretty cool, but only got like a two count out of it. He then went outside, they went up the ramp, they're battling it out for a second. Uh he got LA Park onto the ramp while he was laying down. He then went up this like metal platform. I really don't know what it's called. But he climbed up middle this he climbed up this metal platform, probably like any every bit of like maybe 10, 15 feet. He went up there 
And it looks like he's about to go for a jump, but LA Park looks kind of far away. And I'm like, he doesn't look like he could jump that far. Like, there's some wrestlers who are light heavyweights and cruiserweights. They can make some far leaps, but I'm like, he don't look like he's that kind of guy. You see LA Park starting to get up. I'm like, all right, he's about to do a crossbody. But I'm like, he still looks kind of far. So LA Park, now, I don't know. I don't know why he did this because it just made the move look so dumb. But he gets up. He walks towards Gringo, like, into position for this crossbody. But as he's walking into position, it's not like he's da acting dazed and confused and all that kind of stuff. He literally is looking at Gringo as he's walking towards him. I'm like, you... <laughs> like, you're walking into danger. Like, that's fucking dumb. Like, I, I thought I did not... I did not like that spot at all. Then we get back into the ring. They tried a few more things, and... Uh, L.A. Park ends up getting the referee. I don't know how he ends up getting the referee, but uh, the referee gets knocked onto L.A. Park. Uh, L.A. Park somehow lands on top of the referee, and Gringo makes a smart idea. Like, even though the referee is underneath L.A. Park, I'm going to go for a dive onto L.A. Park. So even if L.A. Park didn't move out the way, because he did, even if he didn't move out the way, you still would have hurt the referee. So I don't understand what was the point of this move. But he goes for a crossbody. L.A. Park, of course, moves out of the way. He does a, a frog splash on top of the referee. He's trying to rake him up or whatever. This gives Ellie Park a chance to recuperate. He hits him with a spear. Referee out of nowhere just wakes up all of a sudden. Counts to three and the match is over. And I was like, wow. Okay, that, that was not the opening match I was definitely looking to see for. Uh, that was definitely not the world's best opening match. Definitely was skippable in my opinion. The crowd chanting this is awesome at some points. And I was like... This is the American. This is the American audience, definitely. I feel like now we've been desensitized to just about we chant. This is awesome for like anything, but you know, like I said, match it. It happened. That's how I feel about it. But they got a plethora of promos building up to the next show. Uh, one from Kodo, some guy named Coco Brazil. He was talking about how uh, Ricky Martinez basically bashed him in the face with this uh, champagne bottle he was at the club. So nice guys to wear this. Now he has to wear this um, eye patch, and that kind of, I guess, is building up back between those two. They also highlight from last week when uh, there was a title match between Loki and Conan. I was actually supposed to watch that show, but I didn't. I wish I actually did now. Um, it showed Loki at the end of his match shanking. I mean, I guess technically he did, but he shanked. Conan at the end of his match, you know, blood everywhere, whatnot, even to, like, legitimately, like, start gutting the guy, but, like, he had, like, a little, like, tool, like, a scalpel tool, and he, like, looked like he basically stabbed him, so, they called it a shanking, but it wasn't really that bad. So, uh, basically, one week later, it turns out, then two guys involved in it, uh, Ricky Martinez, Ricky Martinez and Helio, Helio De La Park, De La Park, I, I think that's what his name is. Was fined seven thousand five hundred dollars. So cumulative, that's about like what forty five thousand dollars they all have to pay. So that was in there. Uh, low key cut a promo towards Tom Lawler, who will be facing against Super Fight in Philadelphia, which a show I'm planning on going to. So I can't wait for that. Uh, I have never seen Low Key wrestle live before, so that's going to be a pretty nice experience. I've seen him wrestle a few times, and he's pretty good. Tom Lawler, I've never seen him before. I know he used to be in UFC. So that's going to be interesting to see what they do there. Uh, they're definitely building this up as a big-time match because Tom Lawler uh, supposedly is a is a good wrestler, and he was a damn good fighter when he was in the UFC. And Low Key, who has been undefeated in this company since 2004, so he has his 15-year streak going on right now. Then we have this promo from this guy named Fred Yee, who basically is uh, calling out Low Key, so they're uh, having a match next week. AC Baby... I Ace Romero, but I call him AC Baby. Cut a promo about uh, possibly going up against Simon Gotch in the future. Well, he beat Simon Gotch a week ago, so he wants to be in contention for a MLW championship match very soon. So that should be interesting. And then we had a promo from Tommy Dreamer. He cut a pretty nice promo uh, building up his Singapore Kane match against Brian Pillman Jr. next week. I'm actually looking forward to next week's card. It's, it's looking pretty good. It looks like a pretty stacked card. You got Rich Swan versus Dragon Lee. You got um, Tommy Dreamer versus Brian Pillman. Uh, you got Loki versus uh, the Fred Yee guy. I never heard of him. But it's, like this, that next week's card looks 
like it's gonna be good as opposed to what happened on this show. And then we get into the main event, Pentagon Jr. versus Teddy Hart. Hart Foundation came out with Teddy Hart. I, as far as I'm not, as far as I know, I believe Dave Boy Smith has signed a contract with MLW, but it allows him to work in Japan. So he's he's down there for I think he's down there most of the time if you want to catch him. But, you know, I know him from his uh, WWE days and, of course, him working in Japan. With Suzuki Goon as a tag team with Lance Archer, so that's where I know him from. The match itself is also kind of... I would call it a decent, but there was a lot of spots in here that just made me go, why? Like, in early going, there was some... Uh, they were having some, like, exchanges, some chops and punches and whatnot. They went on the outside, and Pentagon basically is wiping out all of Heart Foundation... They try to interfere, but Pentagon basically bested them most of the time, which basically is always an indication that he's going to lose. We're not even really too deep into the match. Probably like a good five minutes into the match, Pentagon gets Teddy Hart onto the apron and hits him with a Canadian Destroyer onto the apron, which is a damn, which is a damn uh, sick move. Of course, I think that the Canadian Destroyer has been one of the most overused reversing moves of all time in the independent scene, so it's kind of lost its flair of me. But it was pretty cool seeing that. Gets him into the ring. I'm thinking, okay, it's over because you hit a Canadian store on the damn apron. But he kicks out. I'm like, okay. So then he goes for a package pile driver, which is his finisher. Or at least one of his finishers. Hits that. Immediately after that, he kicked out. And then he kicked out of that too. I'm like, huh. Okay, maybe we could go off the fact that, you know, it's only been like a few minutes. He hasn't done too much to Teddy Hart. And that's why he's kicking out. But then, probably like a, a minute or so after that, he goes for another Canadian Destroyer. Hits down to Teddy Hart. Teddy Hart does like two rotations on a Canadian Destroyer, which actually looked kind of funny. He goes for the pin and he kicks out of that too. And I'm like, like, why you do? Why are you? Why are you making him kick out of these many finishers? This is like three finishers he's hit on Teddy Hart in this match. Like, are you trying to build this guy up that that much? Even if you are, you're kind of really devaluing the finisher because the Canadian Destroyer is a move that finishes off many wrestlers. Package driver, package pop drivers move that finishes off many wrestlers, and it's like he kicked out of all three of them. And then, mind you, later on in the match. Pentagon goes for his Pentagon driver, and Teddy Hart kicks out of that too. And I'm like, is he a major star in this company? Because if not, I don't understand why he kicked out of that many moves. It doesn't make too much sense to me. Teddy Hart did hit a really cool uh, springboard moonsault elbow drop onto Pentagon, but that's really the only noteworthy thing I remember from him in this match. And then the match came when Teddy Hart managed to uh, lock Pentagon in this hammer lock and turn that into a suplex. He hit that, then immediately after, he hit a powerbomb lung blower onto Pentagon and got the pin. And I thought that was very weird because it's like Pentagon did so much more damage on the Teddy Hart. But yeah, Teddy Hart got the win off of the powerbomb lung blower. I, I just thought the, mad, the match was weird. The whole, the whole, the whole show was kind of weird in my opinion. The whole, the, both of the matches in my opinion were weird. So, um... I know you guys might not like this video because I'm not giving a positive review, but I was not a fan of this show, honestly. Uh, I'm going to watch the next show because the card looks good, but if the card for next week didn't look the way it did, I probably wouldn't have tuned in for that show either. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed that both the MLW shows I've seen so far have not been noteworthy, but uh, I guess this is also me being a bit more picky because I <laughs> because I uh, just got off of Ruskin 13 not too long ago. You're writing that high. So you've seen so many great matches, now you're watching this, and you're like, oh, well, I mean, uh, it's whatever. <laughs> but yeah, that was my review of MLW episode 37. What did you guys think about the show? Let me know down in the comment section down below. And yeah, I'm going to be uh, putting up a review of Progress Wrestling probably tomorrow morning before I go to work. And then when I come home, I'm going to watch Rev Pro, not Rev Pro, uh, Defiant Wrestling Loaded, because David Starr is challenging Pac on that show, and I definitely want to see that match. So... Make sure you guys look out for those two reviews I'm going to be doing tomorrow. And yeah, look, as always, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.